Bobby, Bobby Udo joins us now, uh, Nation Building Evangelist. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Well, now we're talking about this uh, economic matter now, uh, not this, uh, because, but to think about all of this, they are connected. Even when the finance minister was making that comment at Babcock University when she talked about allocation that states have and mm -hmm. how they utilize all of those, which generated a lot of response. But the truth of the matter is, look, if economies, if state economies are not developed, they even cited the fact that poverty is linked to disinsurgency. Mm -hmm. So all of those few areas, well, how does that strike you? Well, I think um, the first thing to say that it's, um, she said nothing new. Um, in her first um, tenure as um, finance minister during the Obasanjo administration, she was noted to regularly publish the revenues of states and local governments. Um, in this dispensation, she's not done much of that, but we now and then hear how much states are earning. Um, so um, any Nigerian who is um, particular about development should um, know by now that it's not only the federal government that gets revenue, states and local government get revenues. The question remains, um, why is there a focus among citizens on what the federal government earns and what it does with that revenue and not what the state and local governments earn? I think that's the critical question and that's what I think um, the Honorable Minister is seeking to achieve with her, her speech. So in terms of the response that greeted that speech from hers, did you think that it was also out of place? Well, uh, not really. Um, the two um, um, school of thought playing out here, or two groups playing out here, um, the first group are those who are really looking at the government, the federal government in this case, and um, suggesting that they need to do more. And um, she's going out to try and tell those groups to refocus as well at the other tiers of government. Um, the second group are people who are, are trying to um, look at this as a, a way of government to deflect attention that is put on them. Um, so it's not about how much the state governments end, but it's just a political statement to deflect attention at them. But the summary at the end of the day is that what she said has put a critical question upon us, the citizens. Well, that, that, at that time, I mean, in that statement, uh, she did also give us a historical perspective of the performance of our economy over the years, yep. how uh, in the 80s and the 90s, we almost had this 20-year period where the investment was not just there. Yep. And so if that, as that were, was the case, we will always feel it. We will always have to face up to it at some point in time, which we're doing now. Yep. But after 1999, uh, then all those investments came in, and so we're gradually now picking up. But even at that, from 1999 till now, the resources that has gone to those states, yep. would you say that we have judiciously, or to a large extent, done what we can or what we could? Um, the answer is simply no. Um, I think that um, with the revenue that has come in, um, particularly in the last um, maybe four years, um, as you recognize from 2010, um, the federal, state, and local governments have earned significant amount of money. In addition, um, the Obasanjo administration and the Yadra administration were not noted for sharing the excess crude oil account. Um, President Jonathan has been quite open about that, and now that account has been depleted. Um, there's the argument that the money doesn't belong to the federal government as such, should be shared with the state. He's done that. So there's a lot of money out there. Compared to development, not a lot. Um, but the question is beyond our states judiciously using their money. It's rather our citizens holding state and local government to account. That's the critical question. You know, as the people say that it is very, the way it's skewed, I mean, straight from the Constitution, it makes it a little difficult for that focus to be there. First of all, the fact that all the monies, first of all, go to the federal government and they look to the federal government to implement this sharing formula in which it has the lion's share. And then if you look at the amount of responsibility the federal government needs to take on, mm -hmm. as stated in the exclusive list, yep. it, you know, all of that makes attention shift to the federal government as such. You know, there have been times when states have said, hands of this, hands of that, because we find out that it would seem that it's not because you do not have the wherewithal, but 
in terms of capacity, you don't seem to have the capacity as the federal government to do certain things. Do you think it's more of a constitutional burden than, you know, say states not really doing what they ought to do? I don't think so. Um, that is not to ignore that argument because um, there are several states, for example, who have spent significant amount of money on um, developing road networks and are yet to be fully refunded by the federal government. Um, so that's just one area. There are many areas states could claim to have used their resources to do the work of the federal government and yet have not been refunded, and such resources could help for other development. But I think the other aspect is that the states do have money, and they can do a lot with the money. Um, what they're doing with the money is a question. And um, the search light has to go more on the states and, the, and local government, not ignoring the federal government. So whatever the arguments are, we have to raise a citizen, citizenry, a critical mass of citizens who are saying, OK, federal government, tell us what you're spending, as Ngozi Wela is trying to do. But the state government, also tell us what you're spending. And at the end of every year, let us not only wait for the National Assembly to call committees and say, how did you spend this money, and how uh, are you going now to spend next year? How is that, considering the sharing formula? Um, the sharing formula is something that we can address another day. Um, but for now, um, states do get money. Um, it's not 0%. Um, at least I think it's about 27%. But they are getting money. And what the that is all the 36 states. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, the truth is they could get more. And some of us do share that view that um, government should be decentralized. Um, but at the moment, and referring to the speech in question, the states are receiving money. Some states got as much as $260 billion, uh, which is my beautiful state, Akwaibum. Um, some other states got um, 200 That's still a lot of money. You know, so, I think now the contention is not... Uh if uh, they get money, but they do get money. Go, going further, yep. why is it that at the end of it all, we get to see that some states uh, do better than some others? Uh, because it would seem as if some others uh, deliberately uh, well start of funds. But yep. with this uh, from Okonjawala, every state of the Federation gets some form of revenue. So in trying to fix the security situation in so many of these states, can't we then say some of these have been adequately channeled in that direction? Yeah, there is, um, there is a key argument there. I mean, um, what we see in several northern states, um, especially in the northeast where we have uh, violence, the statistics have been interesting that Borno State has been listed as one of the top 10 states. And here is a state that complains about poverty. So there is money coming in for um, development that can help to alleviate poverty. Um, but sometimes we also have to balance out by understanding that um, security is not exactly under the control of the state. And certain times when certain militancy or, uh, or activities, political activities, um, that brings in togri and all that ra rises up, um, you do need a cooperation between state and federal government um, to deal with that. But I think that what this has done is to enable citizens of Borno, those who are in Nigeria and those who are abroad, to begin to ask those delicate questions, not only to the state government, the state assembly, to the representative in the Senate and the House of Reps. What are we doing with the money we're receiving? And the Borno State Governor has said recently that they spent billions of Naira taking care of the um, JTF force there. But we need to ask, what are we doing with the remaining uh, money? 